Hello, I'm Just One Life, and today we've got a new contender in the Alchemy format, the Naya Werewolves deck. This deck included white for two reasons. We included it for Brutal Cathar, which is a beater of a card, and being able to flip it back and forth with double spelling and then Tovalar flipping it back is really powerful. And the other one is not even a werewolf. We've got the Inquisitor Captain. This all-powerful creature has warped the format so far that werewolves is playing it as their top end creature. It only works when we have 20 or more creatures in the deck, so we have 31 total creatures, putting us at 27 that are at 3 or less mana value, which means we can have 7 creatures in play and still play the Inquisitor Captain, and it can still work. So, here's the deck list. I'll leave the link in the description, and we're going to get into some games right now. Ooh, we drew land. Nice. Pup right away. And we can put in a 3-3 Rahilda, which is really nice. Love that. Do they have a Jawari Disruption? They did play the Ruins on turn one, but they have another one. Ouch! Oh, but they gave up? What? Well, hey, I won't say no to free rank climbing. That's cool. We don't have turn one play, but we have a lot of really powerful three drops. I think it's green, red, white is the order we should play our lands. <laughs> There's our turn one play. Uh, I almost want to play it anyway. It just makes me so sad. If we draw an extra land within our next few turns, we'll have a turn to play a 3-drop plus Tenacious Pup, and that'll be the best time to play it. Oh, good thing we didn't go for the Pup anyway. They had removal. So let's just hit him with the Stormseeker. Boom! 3 damage. Your turn. 3 mana deal 3. triple green to play both of these in the same turn. We do not have that. As one advantage mono green has over us. Okay. We can play this one on green. And go pup plus tovalar. See if we can get some trample damage through. Boom, five damage and draw a card. Love it. Okay, we got another land. Good. Now I'm worried about what they could do here on four. They have more removal. Because we do desperately want to flip it tonight. And if they just let it go, we do get to. Okay, that's all they've got. We can Brutal Cathar that away. Ooh, but actually Brutal Cathar comes in on the night side. Ha! <laughs> they don't care. They just give up. Naya Werewolves, super powerful. Let's... Okay, we go first, which means we can lead on this crossroads on green. And we get to scry. And crossroads on green shows us a Stormseeker. I think we're going to bottom that. We do want to draw more lands, and we want to draw the Captain also. And we also really want to draw Tovalar. So here's a two-mana play that we can play without doing a second green that would allow us to have white mana. We could just Rahilda. Let's do that. They may just burn Rahilda. It might be Boros burn. Oh, they're Tricolor. They're also Naya? Okay, all right, that's interesting. So let's get this in on white. Play our Stormseeker. Buff it up. Oh, okay, yeah, that's enough for them. Naya Werewolves is just smashing through these opponents. With going. this hand, we desperately need to draw land. 
And we can't really do all three colors of mana. I think I'm going to keep it. I hate to play the red land because it means no Tovalar unless we draw another land. But having this white available to us or a second green if we want to go pack leader is really important. And which do we want to do? Pack leader or fateful absence? I think we need the white. So let's just pass it back to them. This is probably one of our roughest starts. We desperately need to draw a land. And it has to be red. Bone Crafter. Whenever it enters the battlefield, conjure a duplicate of a random card from my library. Perpetually gains, you cast mana, means of color. Okay. We're seeing Crossroads. We went first, so we get to scry, and we're gonna pick probably red. Uh, we keep those. Even though it's green? Actually, green is the perfect one for us to keep. All right, let's just uh, try and hit him for one. Is this card even good? I mean, it copies one of my creatures. What if they copy a creature that doesn't work well for their deck? That's the problem with taking things from your opponent's deck. Often, they can just not work out. That time it worked out. Uh, I don't want to pass to combat. I want to kill that thing. Faithful absence. Get out of here. Remove the stop. You can have a... A clue. Important that it conjures a copy, though, because that means it doesn't actually take our one out of our deck. So I could Tovalar and hit them and draw a card. But I think I want Inquisitor Captain. I could even hit one of the two Tovalars remaining in the deck with this. There it is. We hit the Tovalar. We're going to keep the Tovalar. And we're going to hit for one draw card. Okay, but they're playing blue. So they could have some disruption for us. And white, so that means sweepers. If they have double white, they might have the purge. Divine purge. We would clear everything but the captain off the battlefield. And actually, I hope they take the captain here because it's an end of the battlefield effect, which means Brutal Cathar, ours, takes their Brutal Cathar, and our captain comes back and brings us another card. They're going to take the Tovalar. Yep. We have backup Tovalar. Okay, we drew a land. So, I think it's Cathar plus Pack Leader. Easy peasy. They might have a Fading Hope. Which would give them their Cathar back. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked with the pup since it's pointless. But we get four damage in. Unfortunately, not a werewolf, so we don't get to draw a card. It flips to night on our turn if they don't take this Tovalar away from us. They still only have one white mana. They had the option on turn two. Grizzled Huntmaster. We can exile a creature from their hand and search their library for any number of cards with the same name. Exile them, shuffle them, choose a creature card you own from outside the game, conjure a duplicate. So they get to reach into their sideboard for, for the, from their toolbox and take whichever creature they actually need to use in this situation. It's a little scary. I wonder what creature they're, they're conjuring into their hand. We don't even get to know what it is. And they're going to use the clue I gave them. Err... I prefer when those things go forgotten, because then it's just a two mana destroy, but now, now it's not. Now they get to draw a replacement for the creature they took out of our deck. They're actually ahead of card. If you count this clone crafter as a card, I mean, it's blocked our pup twice. Huh! I guess they feel buried deeply enough that they just gave up. All this right. hand seems excellent. We get to pup or pack leader on turn one. Which would we rather do? Probably pack leader first, right? Sure. Uh, 
And I think this is going to be white. Oh, monoblock sacrifice. Let's find out how difficult this matchup is for us. So now we can pup. We can actually just play this tap since we have no need for it. And I don't particularly want to attack yet. Because I do believe they will trade with us. And they deadly dispute it. Okay, so that leaves them wide open to an attack. They're going to take at least three. Plus we're going to play the Storm Seeker, so they'll take three more. I'm going to deal six to them. That was uh, definitely premature. They should have waited and blocked one of my creatures. In fact, with it on the board, I wouldn't have even attacked with the pack leader. Ooh, okay, okay. That makes our attacks a lot worse. Good play. So, now I'm thinking about Brutal Cathar. Instead of the Stormseeker. Right now, I'm afraid to attack with anything because they can kill our pack leader with their ghast. After this, I'm not afraid to attack at all. And it comes in big. Nice. Okay. Love that for us. And if we draw a land, we get to get the captain into play and pull up a creature out of our deck. It's like almost a tutor. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> they picked werewolf, so they only killed one creature with that. Hmm. It's gotta be a Stormseeker turn. And we buff itself. And just try and get in there. They'll, they're gonna take away our pack leader eventually. They can have it fine. And they make, uh, treasure? They sure do. Five total mana available to them. They could hook for three. They don't have a hook. Or they didn't want to cast it. Sanguine. Nope. Okay, just more little wimpy creatures. They just drew a lot of wimpy creatures. Ooh, now they sacrifice Crispan Witch. Yep. That's so great. They get to get three cards from that. It's just nuts. Great combo. You know, I always hated Monoblock Control, but Monoblock Sacrifice is actually fun. So if we put this on green, we can Rahilda and Werewolf Pack Leader, or we can Inquisitor Captain. And I think I want to Rahilda. Because it has first strike and can get through the fell stinger. Okay, fine. I'm sure they make a treasure. The board sweep's looking really appealing for them. They have blood on the snow, but this would be a great time to cast it. Six cards in hand. They've drawn 16 cards. Meet hook for three. That's a board sweep. Okay, that's not a good draw for us right now, but we've got the captain to restock our board. And a Tovalar. Reckless Stormseeker would actually get us in some damage, but let's go Tovalar. And ooh, um, we've got double green. I suppose red. I think we've got all the colors we need, honestly. Oh yeah, that's, that's going on the bottom. Glad we got to scry. Because we do not want to be drawing more forests. We need just straight creatures from here on out. In fact, more Inquisitor Captains would be great. They didn't kill the Tovalar. Well, that's a choice. Do they have another way of killing Tovalar? Perhaps. No. Just a 1-1 one -one that makes a decayed zombie. And a Blood Artist. Alright, cool. 
Their hand is ooh, not very stocked up anymore, and we got an Inquisitor Captain. Give us a Reckless Storm Seeker. No, but we got a Pack Leader. It's not quite as good, but it's still good. And uh, no reason not to get in. I'm sure they block with the Jadar. No, I don't think they want to lose Jadar. They block with Blood Artist? Okay. They drain us for a one with Blood Artist. That's pretty weak. He's in one with the Mute Oak Massacre. This layer holding priority is so annoying. They've cursed me. If it does flip tonight, which we want it to flip tonight, and it then it uh, becomes a 4-4 lifelink. So they just want to lose the creature. They don't actually care about damaging us here. So of course I'll block them. Yeah. That's fine. They just wanted to see if they could sneak in an extra two points of damage. They make another... Oh, that was the end of combat trigger. And they have a Shambling Ghast. Wow. Just non-stop stuff from them. But they're pretty much out of stuff. They just have one card left in hand. Ugh. Land. Not a great draw from us. So let's try and just swing out and see what happens. What do we get? A tenacious pup. Alright. It's a little bit weak, I think. But we can buff the pack leader. So we will. We put this one in on red. We have a single white man available to us, so I guess we'll put this in on white, since we have tri triple green available. Ooh, there's a storm seeker. There's a storm seeker. Lovely, we've got three wolves or werewolves, which means it will flip tonight on our turn. Stormseeker will come in, give itself haste, plus two plus zero. Now, that's assuming everything goes according to plan. We could just see a sweeper. Or a single targeted kill spell against Hovalar. There's the sweeper. Whole board gone. Whoosh. wonder why they played the eye pre-combat, or before the sweeper. I guess they really wanted that card. Um, yeah, they wanted to exhibition. What is it called? Seven mana mascot exhibition. There it is. They have seven mana plus two treasures. Definitely can cast it. Oof. Big oof. We definitely don't want to flip to knight. Because right now we don't have knight stuff. Nice, nice. Play this in on green. You can activate this for two. X equals two. Yeah, that's right. We got a creature land. Stormseeker buff themselves. And while well, we still can get in our six points of damage. And now they have a whole exhibition. Let's see if we can draw out of their exhibition. Yep, you got some stuff. And a warlock class, which is pretty neat. Rahilda. Rahilda, you say? Well, well, well. Rahilda's not bad. Rahilda gets in there. One, two, three. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. They get to grab one of the top three cards, so they will definitely have a usable card next turn. Gosh, this is tough. I think I will just attack with everything. So this time it gets to be three. Give this 
plus one plus zero and double or first strike and they can eat one of my creatures with their four four okay they block everything Rahilda lives All right. There's a sanguine brushstroke. We're getting close to dead here. They have enough mana left over for Faceless Haven. They're not going to activate their Warlock class? Interesting. So they want a Faceless Haven blocker. Another Rahilda. Ooh. Unfortunately, I think that's going to be the game. I think Mono Black Sacrifice got it. I got too impatient on that attack. And if I would held for a turn, maybe I could have done something. But I still think it was pretty hopeless. I thought they were going to pull Warlock class activation last turn and uh, play what they got. They do attack. Ooh, that's lethal. That is a lethal attack. Nothing we can do about it. Unfortunate. But I think that game was potentially winnable and I took the wrong line. You live and you learn. Drop to 1800 Mythic. Okay, we go first. We've got a pretty, ge pretty good hand. We'll keep. We're playing against Joshua the Brave, who has a Fibble Thib, and we have Fibble Thib. <laughs> See, I think those are the same homunculus. They might be different ones. I think the right play here is turn one cross crossroads on green, and then turn two layer the Hydra to get a pack leader out. And then turn three, we could choose red or white as we need. But it's important to have a, a turn two play, I think. So, crossroads, green, scry, pup, no. Pup is too late. We need a another red-white land. We need another Needle Bridge pathway. Or the version that comes in for dual land. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, it's, it's Lair. Because Lair comes in tapped every other turn. But I do really like Rahilda. Rahilda can be so good. I mean, sometimes stealing cards from your opponent's deck is, like, insane. And we're playing against clerics. Oh, boy. Play this on red. We could Rahilda and Pack Leader. But if we play it on white, we could Brutal Cathar. Or a Reckless Stormseeker. White or red? White or red? Oh, man, this is such a tough choice, but I think I'm gonna go red. And Stormseeker. Buff itself. Get in there for six. Draw a card. This line gets us closer to more white mana. Do a little bit of hand organizing here. Now we can't Brutal Cathar unless we pull our white land, in which case we'd want to Inquisitor Captain anyway. And we pull green. Let's move to combat and attack. Draw our card. Okay, that's not white, but it is another land. <sighs> really getting punished for this choice right here. Opponent, do you want to block my pack leader with your cleric? I know it is really tempting, and they've chosen not to. Okay. Well, I suppose we'll play this forest since it can't come in on any other color. And Pack Leader plus Rahilda. 
nothing more we can really do about anything. Holding up this one green, as I was fooled in my last video, um, can make them think we have some sort of interaction, but now the cat's out of the bag, they know we have nothing. They probably just make our Inquisitor Captain more expensive since they know that it um, is really, really powerful. I mean, they play that card. That's why they even play this card at all, just to copy the Inquisitor Captain. Well, that and copy Righteous Valkyrie, because it's so powerful. And it would make sense that they take our most expensive card. Ooh, they take Brutal Cathar even though they know we can play it next turn anyway if we draw white. Seems odd. We don't have the white. So. Huh. Let's... Let's go ahead and go to combat. Buff. Attack with these two again. Draw Tovalar. Okay, that's a good card. They block the Stormseeker wisely because we could just buff the pack leader. This does kill both our creatures. But it's a play we needed to make. And now we get to play an enlarged Tovalar. And it will flip tonight on our turn, which means Rahilda will be a double striker. And Tovalar will grow. They have a Lunark. Oh god. I was afraid that would be the follow-up. What do they find? What could they possibly find? Another Righteous Valkyrie. Gaining them a ton of life. Really can't afford them to gain three more life. That was a good one for us to pull. That was a really good one for us to pull. Let's play it. And we can give her a Hilda double strike. That feels better. Move to combat and we'll attack with these two. They do both have trample. And trample matters a lot here because them getting to 27 life is like absolutely terrible for us. So you want to block and kill Tovalar. Okay, they're going to block and kill Tovalar and take the 8 damage from Rahilda. And we do draw the card. Lovely. And it is a Forsaken Crossroads. We can pick white, finally. Let's think about this. Can we play this as a land? This says cast, right? Cast. So we can only play the Glass Pool Mimic. Um, glass Pool Mimic here. Can copy Storm Charge Slasher. No, I think getting the white is more important. We do get to scry. Keep that on top. And we can't do anything else this turn. So, Inquisitor Captain can pull us another Tovalar. That's really good. That grows twice. They gain... That goes three times, and they gain five life. Go to 21. 
Wait, why so much? Oh, because each time they gets a counter, then the Righteous Valkyrie increases. They can't activate that, and that's really important because they'd be at 27 if they could. Ooh, okay. They double spelled, so things flipped back. We only have one white mana. We could take one Righteous Valkyrie, or we can kill one Righteous Valkyrie. Or we can Inquisitor Captain. What is the right play? What is the correct choice? So they get to 27, they're going to probably come close to killing us on their attack. Let's try the Inquisitor Captain. Maybe we'll get lucky. Roll the dice. Two werewolf pack leaders. Well, I wouldn't quite say that's lucky. So I guess I'll give it haste. And I can attack with some creatures I don't need. Is this worth drawing a card? I really need more white mana. I'd throw away both of these creatures. I'm gonna do it. Ooh. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna pull the trick that they pull all the time. I'm gonna glass pool mimic copying Inquisitor Captain. <laughs> We got Rahilda or Brutal Cathar. We'll take the Brutal Cathar and take away the Righteous Valkyrie. <laughs> hey, that's my move. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So they can pyre and they can grow to... Ooh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Yikes. So we're going to get hit with a huge Voice of the Blessed. And a 6A Valkyrie. 17 unblockable damage. Oh no. There's gonna be even more. It's gonna grow two more times. 19 unblockable damage. Gosh, they gained so much life from those. Ooh. Come with the Righteous Valkyrie too, I've got nothing to block it. There you go. Sure, get in with the captain. That ought to deal with the captain. Well, I think Esper Clerics has uh, gotten to a position where we're going to have a really hard time dealing with them. That is also not a white mana. So we can play this Brutal Cathar and take away one Valkyrie. That does nothing. We're at two life. They've got three flyers. Yeah, we don't have a way out of this. Unfortunately, Esper Clerics has taken us down. Very powerful deck. We saw the best deck at work. Esper Clerics took us down with their incredible resilience. They were able to gain so much life that our damage was just meaningless to them. However, this deck played incredibly powerfully and many people gave up on turn 2, 3, 4, and this deck really is a powerhouse. I think this is a top contender in the format because of how quickly it gets power on the board and how quickly it deals that damage to you. So uh, don't don't overlook this. You might want to build this. The Tovalar card advantage, the Pack Leader card advantage, the Ranger class card advantage if you get to put it at level 3. All of that adds up and the Inquisitor Captain pulling these cards out of your deck is just insane. Playing a Captain into a Tovalar and then attacking with a Stormseeker Tovalar just feels wonderful. So this deck feels great to play, is great to play, love it. Pick it up, play it, let me know how well you do with it, or if you've played a similar deck already. Leave it in the comments. Until next time, fist bump, high five, take it easy.